Hello, everyone. Happy Thursday to you. Hello, Lathiza. Hello, Johnny. Hello, Stella. Good to see you. Hello, Ethel. Hello, Anna. Hello, Claudia. Okay, well, it's good to see you. Good to see all of you. Um, hello, Debbie. So we're making really good ground today. We will, oh, bad here. <laughs> you know, it's just crazy. I can't wait for this pandemic to be over. We're going to finish up on our um, color chart. So today we're going to finish off the duochromes. So um, we're going to start here. And we already finished off the iridescence last week, so we're going to finish off the duochromes and the interference. Okay. Hello, Patsy. Hello, Cynthia. Okay. So, um, and with that, we will have finished the color chart. So 260 plus uh, Lauren's color, 261 colors. So very good ground. All right. So we're going to do the iridescence. There's actually we're going to do the interference. There's seven interference, and then we're going to do the two pearlescent, and then we're going to do the 19 duochrome. So just as we had talked about last week, really quickly, um, the interesting part about the luminescence color is all about whether they reflect whether they refract or whether they do both. So there's four, there's the pearlescent, the iridescent, the interference, and the duochrome. As we discussed last week, the iridescent reflects. So you'll still see it over the white and you see it over the dark. We saw it both over white and we saw it over dark. As we move into the interference, that is going to refract. So what we're going to see is we're not going to see it very, very, very lightly over the white. And we will see it much more over the dark. And then lastly, we'll look at the duochromes. And the duochromes both reflect and refract. So we're going to see them over both. Um, and it's, it's all about the angle of presentation of the viewer as to what they see. Okay. Lunar white, you know, Michael, white ones are really difficult because um, many painters uh, in watercolors don't even use white. So um, I don't have to think about that. All right, so let's go ahead and start. And we're going to start with the, we're going to start with the interference, interference colors. Show you those five. Hello, Sweden. Here we have interference red, interference silver, interference gold, interference green, 
and Interference Lilac. So those will be the first five colors we do. Now again, what I did here, I didn't really do it, I had Ron, my chief chemist, do it for me. Um, this is the Mars Black Ground, watercolor ground, over the Lana Aquarelle. This is Lana Aquarelle 140 pound cold press, and this is the Mars watercolor, Mars Black watercolor ground over the top of it. Okay, so let me see here. You get that whole thing? Yeah. What is that right there? That's this right here. Okay, so here we go. So the first one we're going to look at is Interference Lilac. starts to dry it's really going to pop but you can see really you can't you can hardly see it if I move the paper around I can I can see it on the white um, but it doesn't pop like a dark color and sometimes you may want that that's the beautiful part of how I think about art is you can use it the way that it serves you okay hello Hello, Besnick. Hello, George. Hey, George, I brought your new set with me today. I'm going to show everybody in about, uh, uh, probably when I've done the interference colors, I think I'm going to show everybody. Claudia always says for me to use a little bit more water. I guess that's a that's a learned thing because I tend not to do that. That works better when I do. So this is going to be the interference green. Okay, it's starting to dry and starting to pop here in front of me. So as it dries, it'll just get uh, more and more. Yep. So we'll see George's colors here today in a couple of minutes. Okay, the next one is the Interference Gold. Interference silver. Interference silver. Now we do the duochromes in a moment. You'll see those both over the the dark and the light. The duochromes are probably the most complex of all the 
luminescent series. And this is interference red. So that's what they look like in the plate, even on the plate, because the plate is white. Very, very difficult to see them. But if you move it, move it around, they really do, they pop. So it all depends on kind of what it is you're trying to accomplish. Okay. Let me wipe that up a little bit. So you can see as they dry, they really start to pop over that, over that dark, really pop. So interference are just, they're just kind of, they're just kind of different in that you don't see them over the white, very difficult to see over the white. Super pop over anything that's dark. Okay. So now let's do the last two because there's seven of them in this family. The last two that we're going to see are going to be interference blue and interference copper. Yes, they do, Stella. They just shimmer. You're right. They shimmer on white. And that's going to be interference copper. The more we wait, the more it's going to pop. And this is going to be interference blue. Oh, that's interesting, George. I didn't know that. So George says some 15 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, he used the iridescent and interference colors. Um, beautiful colors, 
um, definitely, but not in my style any anymore. And if, I'd really recommend you go to um, George's website. He has beautiful, beautiful artwork. Um, still in the hands of many excellent artists. They're quite unique. Okay, so as we let this dry, um, and my camera goes back into focus. I don't know why it lost focus there. Come on. Come on. Anyway, when that camera goes back into focus, we have just finished the interference colors. Let me show you really quickly um, the sets as we let this dry here. We'll look at George's sets. He's So these sets right here are both George's. Mas George Politis, Master Set 1 and Master Set 2. So George Politis, um, Master Set 1 and Master Set 2. This is George's artwork, his fabulous artwork. Um, it tells about, about the colors, about George. Number is that one? Okay, so hot off the press. Still, I will do that. I'll turn the paper so the black is on top. Okay, so those are George's. There we go. That does look pretty good. And this is Angus McEwen. So Angus McEwen is out of Scotland. And then we'll have time, I'll open all these up. I'm gonna have time today, but I'll open all these up. Um, this is Thomas Schaller. Thomas Schaller, you can get his name right there. Thomas Schaller. Boy, that's between the light and this camera trying to autofocus. Let me see if it'll autofocus there. So there's. There's Thomas. So we have George's, Thomas, Angus McGillan. This right here is Michael. Michael's from Akanda. Michael as well as uh, as well as George and Thomas are all dangerous with brand ambassadors. Michael has a beautiful website. Um, very giving uh, person, just like all the brand Brand ambassadors are very giving um, of information and, and technique. So this is Michael's set. Michael's from Toronto. George is from Greece. Let it focus. There we go. That's Michael's. And this is uh, I have my tongue here. Leisha. Alicia set. There. So those are the new sets. Yeah, it's much better. Thank you. Okay, so now let's go into the. I'm going to do the two. The two pearlescent. Now we can put this sheet away and just. The next ones will all be duochromes. So this is a couple times you've seen these now. Let 
but I wanted to make sure that you saw both of them together. Yes, when they're extremely talented artists. Um, and the thing I like about the, the brand ambassadors is how much they're willing to give to and discuss things with um, other artists, just like you do on this site. You're all so good about that. I, it's it's a, just a great, a great trait. Okay, so here we have the pearlescent shimmer and the pearlescent white. And you kind of, uh, maybe you can't see. The pearlescent shimmer, they're both the same pigment. The pearlescent shimmer just happens to be a little bit bigger particle size than the pearlescent white. So it's going to have more um, uh, refraction to it. Okay. So let's look at both of those. So pearlescent shimmer, pearlescent white, both the same pigment with different particle size. And the particle is mica. You're going to see it pop. And this one's going to be pearlescent, pearlescent white. Same pigment, smaller particle size. I can really see it. So you see the shimmer, and this is the white. And the more they dry, the more they're going to pop. And over white, in front of me, camera doesn't really pick it up. You can still see it here over. You can see it as you, as I change my viewpoint. I can see. I can see the. Um, I can see the blue. I can see the copper, um, and I can see the the. Um, pearlescent shimmer and I can see the, the pearlescent white but they really pop over dark right so Claudia I think uses some of the iridescence um, Sandy Allneck is another one who actually talks about them quite a bit so that's a good website for you to go see as well if you're interested so that finishes up the pearlescent. There's only two of the pearlescent. And now we're going to the duochromes. There's 19 duochromes. at the duochromes now and this is 
Violet Pearl. This one is green. It's really hard for me to read upside down. This. Okay. So this one is going to be Violet Pearl. This one is Green Pearl. Um, this one is Desert Bronze. This one will be Arctic Fire. And this one is Oceanic. Because you'll see that glimmer. You see that glimmer just gets on your fingers. So you even have to take care of your fingers if you don't want that on your on your artwork. I don't know if you can see that or not. It gets everywhere. I'm just going to take some of that off. Actually, we enjoy doing and supporting artists. You've been very good to us, and I think um, it's great to reciprocate. So the first one is going to be the Arctic Fire. Then Desert Bronze. Green Pearl. Violet Pearl. And oceanic. Okay. They are kind of neat names. This one's green pearl. This one's going to be violet, violet pearl.
<laughs> That's good, Anna. Thank you. I, I've, I've used the, uh, I have not. Um, thank you for giving that information. Uh, I think next time I do this, I will do that. I love your recommendations. I use the, uh, um, the plate because it was recommended and I have my little extra water bottle here to make sure I put enough um, water because that's something I still struggle with. Um, there we go. So let's, let's look at that. Now these are all depending on how, uh, how you present them. They'll actually they have the they have a shift, so duochromes will shift between um, two colors. So you can actually hard to see over a camera, but they're actually they actually shift. Okay, so that's the, the duochrome. Yeah, so the oceanic still you can see kind of the it's what you know you can see down here. Oh, it's hard for you to see that. There we go. Now it's picking it up. So you can see the oceanic has that blue, right? And then when it's on dark, um, it's going to have both those characteristics. It's going to shift. Um, but it's really, it's really kind of playing with it to be able to see that because you have to view it from different angles to be able to see that. Okay, so that's the first five. And again, because we have both the reflection and refraction, when it's being reflected, we're going to see the color over over the white. And when we talked about um, this right here, which is Arctic fire, you can see the Arctic fire. The reason you're not seeing that is that's because this is really refractive. Okay. So duochrome has both reflection and refraction. Where it has reflection, you're going to be able to see it over the white. Where it has a high degree of refraction, you're not going to see it. So that's what's going on here. Okay. All right. So that's these five. So the, so the next five are going to be Violet Fantasy. Let's see if that camera can, can do that. Violet Fantasy. This one is Turquoise. This is Emerald. This is Saguaro, Saguaro Green, like the Saguaro Cactus. And this one is Tropic Sunrise. Okay, so those are, those are the next five. Yeah, I think turning the paper was a good recommendation, Stella. Thank you. Okay. So here we go. Yes. So Karen says these colors are really taxing to the camera's abilities. Absolutely. Between the camera fighting and the light fighting, um, yeah, it, it, it definitely is. And of course, the uh, uh, the presenters having some. Um, I've seen uh, Michael do. Michael out of Toronto does some wonderful things with his cameras. He, he has double cameras or triple cameras, and um, I'm I'm just not not at that level. Okay, so that's going to be by the fantasy. There we go. Tropical 
sunrise. Squirrel. People have used the luminescence in all type of ways. Some um, some will get cards and they'll stamp the card and then use the, um, the luminous, luminescent series to go back in and make them pop and they use them to send to people for birthdays or special occasions and that works really well because they're, they're so vibrant and alive. Um, okay, so here we go. Yeah, Michael is definitely has all the devices set up in just phenomenal ways. I really liked, I don't know if many of you have watched the um, the brand ambassadors and in the artist studio, but it's just marvelous. Stella does this and Michael does it. Um, and they have different parts of their studio have both um, um, artificial lighting, but also natural lighting. And Michael has it so it comes over both sides of his studio. And I thought, wow, that's, that's just... So interesting. Again, it's it's that I think it's a whole painter of light. You're all painters of light. Um, of course, somebody actually trademarked that, so it's difficult for you to actually put that in writing. But I consider you all to be painters of light. Okay, this is going to be the um, violet fantasy. And this is the Tropic Sunrise. This is the saguaro. Now that the saguaro starts with, so you can see it's kind of interesting than the other colors. So I can see part of it has that green. I don't know if you can see the, the green inside of it, but it has green and brown. So that's going to pop. Yep, you heard right. Tropic, tropic sunrise. It's it's trying to put us all in a better place, George. It seems like every day we're getting we're getting closer and closer to being able to go out and see each other again, which is going to be really neat. I must say. My family and I, um, I don't think I've contacted them ever as I'm pretty good in speaking with them. Uh, but now with my sister, I speak to her almost every day. And it's, I think what, what, what the 
pandemic has shown me is how important family is and how important friends are. Uh, probably, probably, you know, when you look at things, it's the most important thing is family and your friends. See it I'm trying to so you can see that the, the, the brown the brownish to it and here here you can kind of see it I see it more in front of me um, it goes green I see green now and it goes into the um, violet so I see green when I flip it this way in front of me it's green and this way I can flip it and I can see the the violet so I can I can change it depending on um, the aspect that I'm viewing it. And that's what, what the duochromes are all about. The emerald looks like fuchsia. It does look like fuchsia right here. I would say absolutely. Um, yeah. But then you have all this microparticles in it, which... Okay. Oh. Absolutely, Anna. I probably need to quit throwing all my rags on top of it down here. This is going to be lapis, lapis sunlight, blue pearl. We've seen violet pearl. We've seen green pearl. This is blue pearl. This is cactus flower, aquamarine, and cobble blue. Cobble blue is pretty popular. So here in Seattle, our weather's really, it's actually quite good. We're starting to heat up. Um, days are getting a little bit longer, which is nice. Karen says, beautiful sunny day in Camus. Julia, Cobble Blue is one of my favorites. It's, it's used by quite a few people, Julia.
And this one is cactus, cactus flower. Cactus flower. one is blue pearl, blue pearl. Last one is going to be lapis sunlight. Last one of these five is going to be lapis sunlight. That's really interesting. You see, it's it's blue, but then it's gold and blue over in here as you change it. So let those continue to dry. Put it over here. Let's do the. Last four. Last four, and we're done 261 colors. That's a lot of colors to go through. Um, so now you've seen every single color, which is really cool. So we're going to see um, Adobe. Wav.
hibiscus. Oh, that's an interesting stud. Really awesome to see. Someone says there were textiles in these colors. And this one's Autumn Mystery. Autumn Mystery. Okay, so two of these. And those are the last four. Yeah, that's mauve. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Devin, we actually finished all the Primatex. Uh, yeah, we did all the Primatex. So the next one is I'll be looking at with you with the sticks and the pans and the grounds. Um, but if there's a Primatex you want to see, let me know. I bet you have all of them, Stella. Maybe not, uh, maybe not Lauren's, because that's brand new. It just started shipping. Okay, this is the hibiscus. You know, Karen. It's very difficult to have a yellow, um, a yellow Primatech, and the the colors that are yellow are 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 very weak, very very weak, or they have sulfur, and we wouldn't use anything that has sulfur in it. Um, and the other yellows, there's kyanite, which is yellow, but it's a very 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 weak yellow so some 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 are just very difficult i mean it's a very beautiful mineral gorgeous mineral gorgeous crystal um but not beautiful once you have made it into pigment okay this is going to be the um autumn mystery Certainly beautiful on the plate. Add some more water to it so I can so I have enough paper here. Okay. Really? So Julie says she uses hibiscus a lot. Awesome. So Anna Marie, um, some ochres, so ochres can be synthetic and ochres can be natural. So siennas can be synthetic or natural. So siennas, ochres, umbers, when they're in the, from the natural world, um, riverbeds, etc. there's umbers and siennas from, from France, from Italy, from America. Yes, they, they, they are natural. When I say primatech, it means for me, it's something that uh, we made because it means primitive technology. And um, the primitive theories are, in particular, uh, minerals that Bruce, my geologist, sources. And then I, have a, I, I own a company that then processes those minerals into pigment. And the pigment I use in creation of paint. 
So it kind of gets back into um, really natural versus synthetic. Um, so umbers and siennas can be natural or they can be synthetic. Okay, so this is the last one we did. So I'm going to put this over here just to have it dry, maybe a couple more minutes. And let's go over and see the ones that we've done today. Um, they're still kind of wet. I think you can see, you can tell which ones are um, iridescent, right? So you would know right away these are probably iridescent because we can't see them over the white because it's a huge amount of refraction, okay? Because they're being refracted, we can't really see it that well. And so there they are. These are the iridescent that we did earlier today. But they really pop under, really, really pop under the light here in front of me. This is our pearlescent. Um, this is our shimmer. You can tell it's the shimmer. It's just all over the place. And this is our white. Okay. Um, iridescent and iridescent. These are five of the iridescent. Again, we can see that quite readily because we don't see it. I can see it over here. Let me see if the camera's going to get this. The camera kind of gets it. But I can see it here, I'm nowhere as, as much as over the dark. Um, but I can see the gold, I can see the green, I can see the, um, the, the different colors. But nowhere as much as I can over the dark. Okay, now we're going to go into the duochromes. Right? And the duochromes I'm going to see over the white or over the dark. Where I don't see it as much, like right here, that's because there's more refraction happening than reflection. Remember, the duochromes have both reflection and refraction. So that wave comes and hits and bounces up, that's our reflection. It comes down and hits and goes in many directions, that's refraction. So there's more refraction than reflection happening. So everything you do as a watercolorist is, is, is about light. Um, when you're putting your paint on your paper and you're pushing it around your paper, really all you are doing, and it's, a, it's all, it's huge, you're manipulating light. You're having light do what you want it to do, which is actually quite beautiful. You are painters of light. Okay, here's the next one. And again, do a chrome. We see it quite readily over the white, except for this one right here, which is more refraction than reflection. And then we see all of them over the dark. So we see them all over the dark. And there's one that we see very little of over the light. Okay, this is the next one. You can see it quite readily over the dark. So depending on where the the where the perception of the viewer, how the viewer is looking at this, is going to kind of be what they see, and it can change. Again, that duochrome is going to have it. Here you can see it's kind of, well, maybe you can't. It's hard for me to see. Yeah, I'm going to hold it up. Let's see if it does it. Yeah, you can kind of see it. You can see it really easily here, but the camera's not getting it all. Here it's green, and here you see it's blue. So you know this has both blue and green. And then the same thing with here. You can see this one has high blue, and yet it's very gold here. So this is going to have the gold and the blue. So, so it's a duochrome. It has two colors. Okay. And then the last one we did is this one right here. So this is our last. These are the last four we did. So there they are over dark. There they are over dark. And there they are over light. And you can see all four of them. So we're having quite a bit of reflection happening within these duochromes. Pam, I love the Permatex too. So the soil minerals that are used to source ochres, like in Australian desert, they're able to be consider for yellow in Primatech? No, so Anna, there would have to be a high degree of purity 
uh, for it to be a Primatech because we're actually using the mineral. Um, and to date, while we have looked at hundreds and hundreds, in fact, Bruce right now is in Arizona um, at the biggest mineral show in the world. And um, it's very, very, very hard to, to find a, a really good yellow. We're always on the lookout for that. Um, okay, so with that, that ends the, ends the presentation. Um, please join me tomorrow or next week. We'll be going over the... Next week, we'll be going over the sticks. Um, I did let you know, and, and certainly um, if there's a, a color you want to see mixed with another color, um, if there's some specific questions you have, now's a really good time to do that because we're, we're done the color chart. By this time, if you've either been with me or you've watched the videos, you know how to read a color chart. Um, you know what the series are. You know what the legend to talk about the light fastness, the granulation, the staining. You know all those things. Um, you understand how to read the pigments. Uh, for those of you that stayed a little while, you know how to use the C-Lab um, to graph it out to see which one's more blue or which one's more red or which one's more green or which one's more yellow. You know how to do that as well. Um, there's a series of stories online. Um, so next week, we'll start going over the sticks. Send me your questions if you want to see this color mixed with that color, and it gives me time to, to pick it out and do that. And uh, that'd be great. George, I will show your set and go over every color in your set. Thank you so much, George, and Claudia, and Stella. Um, thank you all. It's, it's really great having you. Okay, bye-bye, everybody. I wish you health and happiness. Bye-bye.